Well, we're facing profound challenges where the economies that we have have been locked into a pattern of resource use which has taken us beyond our environmental budget. We are overburdening our fundamental life support systems, transgressing planetary boundaries in such a way that is unsustainable. And in one of the most important areas, a climate which is fit for human civilization, we are terribly close to going over the edge. Some of the best climate scientists in the world are telling us that we're on the cusp of losing the climate in which civilization evolved. So our challenge is, how can we change quickly enough and in such a way that we still meet the basic needs of everybody on the planet and that even maybe we may end up with a new economy which is better than the old one, in which human well-being is better, in which the distribution and access to resources, to our life support systems is better, and that we have a better prospect of a lasting future. That's our challenge. Now, I believe it means letting go of certain things in economics that have become dogmatic, doctrinal. That is the assumption that economies can grow indefinitely in an orthodox fashion. In fact, the best science is telling us that where the rich countries are concerned, the OECD countries, um, they probably cannot grow anymore. And those same countries are signed up to preventing a global temperature rise of two degrees or more on the basis of science and with equity. So if we want to see human development for the great majority of humankind, two-thirds of humanity that doesn't have the same standard of living that we have, then we're going to need to change far more radically in the already industrialized countries. And the good news is I think there are ways to do that. I think in the short term, the most obvious thing for countries like um, Britain and France and Germany to go through is what I would call a Green New Deal. That is financial innovation in order in order to invest in the radical, deep, low-carbon re-engineering of our infrastructure, covering everything from making our buildings more energy efficient, moving to mass public transport systems, shifting the energy supply system, reducing demand for energy, importantly, as well, and then looking at how we grow food, and also where our stuff comes from and how much stuff we're buying, our consumer models. We've come to think that the only barrier on how many electronic gadgets we have in our home is what we can afford. Now, in a carbon-constrained world, that it's not going to be the same anymore. I did a, an experiment when I took one day and I counted every advertisement I saw, defining me as a consumer, encouraging me to buy stuff. And there was a, well over 500 by the end of the day. And I counted at the same time the number of messages I saw speaking to me as a citizen with responsibilities. And there were just three. So we live in like a paint pot of a culture which tells us to buy, consume, buy, consume, when in fact, All the research on human well-being tells us that we are decades past the point that having more stuff gives us a better life. The things when you've got your basic needs met that improve quality of life are the ability to spend time with friends and family, to engage in things where you can learn new skills, to be active and to do things. So yes, I'm optimistic because there's a way ahead.